I did a short about debugging, but I think it's probably worthwhile to try to walk through the process, or at least the process I used. As I mentioned in that short, when I was a programmer, I wasn't the most elegant programmer. I had a tendency to use hammers for all solutions, but one thing that I was really good at was the process of debugging. I'm going to try to break down the steps that I went through. I don't actually have a problem in front of me right now, so we'll see if I can successfully do that. Something's not working. The very first thing you should always do is assume that you've messed it up. Your very first initial instinct is going to be to think of something and almost immediately discard it as obviously not the problem because how could you possibly have done something so silly or so minor to cause the problem? And chances are, more often than not, that whatever you just thought of and are trying to discard is actually the problem. Look at that obvious thing first because if it is that, well, good, you're done. If it isn't that, it's not going to take that much time to check and discard it as a possibility. I think it's worthwhile to just keep digging in on this a little bit. It can be hard to not discard the obvious things because the obvious things are the things where you have to admit that you were a little bit stupid when you did something. Try to overcome that because better to feel a little bit stupid for forgetting to initialize a variable as opposed to spending five hours debugging something and then finding out you forgot to initialize the variable. Better to feel a little silly for double checking the thing that any first year student should have obviously remembered to do, and it turns out it wasn't the problem, than not checking and it is the problem. If you take anything away from this video, take this away. It does no harm to check the obvious possibility and it can be incredibly helpful. And getting over the ego that makes you feel like you couldn't possibly have made such an obvious mistake is critical for you to advance in your career and get better at doing this and get better at fixing things. I've seen recently a bunch of videos about junior programmer versus senior programmer and in my experience the senior programmer isn't the one who types in a thousand lines of code and has it compile first time and run perfectly the senior programmer is the one that knows how to suppress their own ego and figure out the problem and understand that everybody makes mistakes and to fix those mistakes okay let me try one more thing you use a spell checker don't you but you know how to spell most of the words you're using so what's the spell checker for? Well, mostly the spell checker is for catching the silly little mistakes that you made. This is no different. Take the opportunity to look for those obvious mistakes as if you're spell checking your algorithm, as if you're spell checking your code. If that's not the problem, now you're getting into a little bit more complicated of an issue. So I think my process would work like this. So step two, because you've, step one was looking for the obvious thing. Step two would be to identify what's actually going on. So by doing that, by figuring out what is actually occurring, the, the symptoms of the problem, the mistake or error might become obvious at that point. If you are working in code or systems that have worked in the past, then either someone's recently changed it or new content has entered into this system. You can go searching for the source of the problem in kind of a binary search way. If you can identify the symptom of what's happening, if you can get before when it's occurring, then you can binary search your way through the code looking for the place at which it stops working. You can do this by stepping through the code, but it actually can be faster to use print strings or some other form of text display or logging to output what's going on and identify the moment at which it goes wrong, or at least get close. Once you're close, then it probably makes sense to step through the code line by line and see when it actually goes wrong. The important thing for me for debugging is to keep an open mind, assume that anything potentially could be 
going on that could be causing the problem, but to start with the most obvious things first and only move towards the more random or out there things as you've eliminated the more obvious ones. Debugging is a skill like any other, and through practice, you get more effective at it. And as you learn a code base, or as you get comfortable with the way systems work, you become more able to intuitively understand the effects of certain things. So that's where understanding what's actually happening becomes important. Knowing that a mixing, missing texture in a shader will cause this light blue glow effect on the shader means that if you see that, that's the obvious thing that you should check before anything else. Until you've gotten familiarity and seen that kind of reaction before, you don't know that and you have to kind of go through and debug it more traditionally. This is one of the very difficult to quantify benefits of an established and understood code base being used by an existing team. They know these things, these weird little noises that the engine makes, the funny little smells that come off of it, and what to do to fix them. And they can keep, keep this thing running, even though it may knock and rattle. I know this has been very engineering and programming focused. That is my background from a dev perspective. But I do think this approach of starting from the most obvious and setting your ego aside applies to all disciplines and all problems you encounter, even things outside the game. Debugging is critically important. All games have bugs. Hopefully this gives you a starting point to start to build your own familiarity with your own code base. Thank you.